this way, but I guess I'm forced to. For time's sake, should have had this ready. So obviously, it's not. You didn't hear any piston boo or anything changed. Nothing changed at all. It's still all sounding good. And the reason why is because it doesn't have any information to go relative to. And I'll explain what that gibberish means. Um, basically, what this setup does is it makes a all these gates that you see here, all these double sets of gates. You'll notice that a bunch of them are they all except that one set are in the off position. So this is just a mass exposure. It's checking for which bit is available and then what to do from that bit. So obviously this is the one that successfully gets checked. So regardless of whether it's an up pulse or a down pulse, um, the first thing that's going to happen in that particular bit is it's going to get turned into the off position. So if you'll notice coming in from the top gate and the bottom gate, this repeater right here and this repeater right here are both sending their signals to push this regular piston, which turns the gate off. So regardless of whether you're up ticking or down ticking from a memory block, that one's got to get turned off. The next thing that happens is it's just routing to the next piston that needs to be pushed ahead. So obviously if you're going up and you're going around the ring, it's simply going up to the next one. If you have to go back, it's got to wind around this little path, and this one is particularly wound like this just because it's the end of it. It has to swirl its way back around to the start of this, but it's still at least less than a second. It allows me to complete the loop. And then when it goes down and around again, and boom, swings around, comes up, and hits the one from behind, and it pushes it in a positive position. So now you have the ability to scroll both directions. These top lines that you see here, this one and this one, is just a mass reset. And of course I've got blocks set up here to just set out an off pulse. There's no actual other pulse changing any other beats. And this one here is set the on pulse for this bit, which is the zero bit. So that is a simple memory lock. And again, because different digits have different sizes. Some of them only have 10 in total, some of them only have 6 in total. The last one actually has 12 in total because it does the entire series. Um, that is at 0 to 11. So, now, one more little thing, of course, you'll not that it affects the alarm memory, it only affects the clock memory. How does it know when to carry the one? And carry the one in the other direction as well. And that was really simple because anytime it's going from 9 over to 0, it simply needs to send an up pulse over to the wait for a second. Let me check the Oh, right, of course, I'm sorry, I'm so foolish. I stacked the memory blocks. <laughs> the video memory blocks are all side by side with each other. Um, the seconds position is actually here and here. This lower one represents the one seconds. This upper one, which is the same thing, represents the ten seconds. That's why I was having such a hard time. Or maybe the other one. Oh, right, sorry. The, the top one is the 1 seconds. The lower one is the 10 seconds. It's the shorter one. Okay, so I might have actually been looking at some of the wrong things earlier, um, but let me just re clarify. Okay, so this is the 1 seconds position where the pulses are coming in. And let, yes, like I said, when you go from 9 over to 0, so it would be this bit going over to this bit, the pulse is going to come out, and here we go, this T-junction, and it sends its pulse into the up pulse of the 10 cent. Then if it gets the same sort of situation, it's going to send a pulse up to the next digit, then to the next digit, then to the last digit. And even if you're counting down, if you get to zero and you're counting down to nine, 
it again will send a down pulse to the next digit and then to the next digit and the next digit. So say for example you were at zero 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 and you counted down, it would go to eleven fifty nine fifty nine. But because it's doing all the detection in series like this, you would first see the nine change, then the five, then the nine, then the five, then the eleven at the end. So uh, it it would you know I mean it would look a little bit lagged. It, it, they're not all going to change at the same time like if they were in parallel. But either way, it still works. Okay. Uh. So yeah. Obviously, all the command lines they again come out and stream out to the uh, the pulse warmers for the upticks and the down ticks for all the memory lines. So that was just a lot of dropping blocks and yeah, doing nice pretty little wires and whatnot. Um, everything else, I've got the, here we go, here's the safety shutoffs for the floor pads. Again, this is another double gate to whether or not you're changing the alarm memory or clock memory. This is the NPM changer. Um, and, uh, oh, that's the. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> it does something. Um, oh yeah, these are all the actually. Oh, I don't even want to explain this. These are all the alarm pistons. But let me. Okay, yeah. Let me let me just explain the alarm part, and then I'll just do a quick summary of all the command lines at best that I can. Anyways, no promises. Okay, so basically the way I figured I was going to do my alarm clock, really simple, straightforward way. I wanted to just be one massive AND gate. Which means that it literally needs to solve a massive series of AND situations where all these series have to be true, and if they are, then they'll give you a true signal. So basically, I was like, okay, what am I looking for? I need it to be the, at the exact same minute, exact same, exact same minute, and exact same camera amp, and exact same hour. So all I had to do was take the feeds from uh, my logic cores. So they send out from their from whether or not they're turned on or not, they'll send out a, a signal that comes out here, one going to the video core, and then one coming out these lines that you see coming up the sides. So the exact same digits for the clock memory are being lined up for the exact same digits of the alarm. And then they come back into this series here. And basically, this is the question generator. Whether or not the values are true or whatever, whether or not everything is being satisfied. And basically, what I was thinking, because what's the most simple AND gate in vanilla craft? It's a big old red torch. And you're just waiting until there's no more power going to it. So in any circumstance that it's not the same, I needed a positive signal. So let's say, for example, the one position, like the ones in seconds, was a five, and the ones for a clock memory, and then the alarm memories, ones in seconds, was a four. I need a positive signal. So what I had to do was first make this little setup. This is coming from the clock memory. And if it's on, it'll obviously turn this repeater off. If it's and also be sending a signal to these set of repeaters. Sorry, turn this torch off and send a signal to the repeaters. If it's not, this torch will be on and there'll be no signal coming from this. If this signal is on, this block will be in the out position, therefore receiving the signal from that red torch if it was on. If not, it'll be in the re retreated position and be receiving the signal from that one. So you can see why if both of these lines were on, you'd be getting a negative signal. And if both of these lines were off, you would still be getting a negative signal. So all I had to do was then bring them all together in this one big fancy series like this, coming into the main line. And then again, kind of compressed further into a single redstone torch. When this lights up, this signal is then brought through. 
I decided to just take it through the video core just because I thought this would be the need to this resistance. I mean, there's already a good second and a half of delay in the alarm itself, so I mean, you know, I'm not, it's not necessarily a bad thing to try and take a shortcut. Um, so yeah, that signal comes through, and alright, now we're into the mess of gates that I have for the alarm. Because I had to do some safety gates, because I realized that there would be some situations where we fuck things up. But I also had to, you know, make it so that you could keep it like, you know, lock position and other stuff like that. Alright, so this one here, um, is, um, I want to say it's I'm going to be back in about two seconds. I forgot if I had to get that one I did. And I bet you if I turn that one off, it's going to take a while to get scared. Like I said, I completed this project several months ago. I don't know why I didn't bother to make a video earlier. I just was too busy with other shit. I was just thankful to have finished it and be like, oh, finally, I need a break. Um, yay, it turned off, okay. So I know how my machine works, apparently. Uh, okay. The line comes through here. Obviously, when you have these, it's set, it'll be in an open position. When the signal comes through, it's going to set this into the, it's toggle it into its on position. It will take this signal and then go down this line, which goes to the back speaker. If, because the redstone torch is generating a solid pulse if for whatever reason the clock was stopped on that particular position you could not push the block back and turn the alarm off like remember how I had when I turned the alarm on and the clock memory and the alarm memory both refreshed and it just turned on I would not have been able to turn it off if um, the alarm set was still in the on position. And what if I did try to do that, this piston would end up getting buggered up and not work properly because then it would try to be pushing against a piston that's already in the outward protruded position. So for all intents and purposes, I made this little safety gate here, which means you can't actually turn the alarm off until those two numbers aren't synced up. Which are or the the alarm on switch has been turned off and that signal is therefore broken. Then this piston will have retreated and then you'll actually be able to use this piston and push the block back and turn off the signal. So yeah, that's why there had to be several little things like that. But anyways, yeah, it was just trial and error and making it work. So anyways, that signal, like I said, when it is in the on position and blasting position, this signal will come back here. And basically, I've got this little redstone sort of waiting to just give her sort of pulser. I don't know why I chose this sort of like series of, of little beeps making up one fuller sound. I thought it would be cool, but it's kind of annoying. But I was only able to use no blocks. Apparently Minecraft still doesn't really allow you to incorporate uh, new sounds. Maybe I'm just out of that out of the loop and they have found a way, but yeah, I've just been using the standard no blocks. Everything's really vanilla, really old school, etc, etc. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the entirety of the project. Um, I think the only other unique thing I didn't really get to mention, I don't know whether it is unique or not, this whole putting the water back here, I fill the top row with water and then I fill the tops of these 3x3 cavities with water. Or you can just fill the whole thing with water and then whatever source blocks get destroyed, it doesn't really matter. Um, and the reason why I do that is because water backfills really quick. I tried it with lava once, but it doesn't backfill quite nicely, so it kind of looks weird. And the reason why I picked orange wool is because it's the complementary color of blue, so it's got really nice contrast. But it still looks nice, you know? It's not just the regular stone being pushed out of something. I've tried different things, other than, like glass blocks or glass plane panes or iron bars. I mean, I'm sure you could 
fill up your own custom texture pack for that particular paint and just make it really clear and opaque and still get a really nice solid effect like that. So yeah, anyways, that's my alarm clock and timer project. Thank you for watching.